So, hi everybody, from Rot Survivalist here, and uh, this segment is on uniforms and equipment of the Civil War soldier. Um, so, just so you see, this is how the frock coat is set up. Get the piping and uh, neck piping, <laughs> almost like the Marine class uh, dress blues. So, there you go. And uh, so, first off, I want to kick off uh, Infantryman's best friend. It's just right here. Uh, this is the 1853 rifled musket. Um, awesome piece of equipment right here. Very, very awesome. It's a 58 caliber. Um, shoots, uh, shoots mini balls, round balls. To, to be, it can be a makeshift shotgun. Yes, you can turn these into a shotgun uh, because the rifling is not pronounced. It's very light rifling. So you can literally load up shot and and there you go. So they're pretty badass. I am go I am I intend to do a video on um rifled mus rifled muskets. So there you go. So some of you might be asking what this thing here's for. Alright. Well when I was in Gettysburg. So when I was at Gettysburg, um, <laughs> why me? <laughs> All right. So when I was at Gettysburg, the my whole gun like fucking heated up, and it was it was like in the middle of July, and uh, yeah, it was pretty fucking warm out. Uh, you wearing these walls, man. I'm telling you, it, it, it's a wake up call. So it's pretty warm up and uh, pretty warm out. Warm up, warm, warm, warm out. Am I having a fucking language problem today or something? Maybe I'm flustered, politically flustered right now. I think that's probably it. So politics. <laughs> so. It was really, really warm out. It was like 90-something degrees outside. And these fire black powder. And you start firing X fast. These warm up fairly quickly. <laughs> I mean quickly. And uh, I was wearing my wool fingerless gloves, which I forgot to show off. But I was wearing my wool fingerless gloves. And... To keep my hand from burning on the musket. So then when I was at Cedar Creek. When I was at Cedar Creek. I got this. This leather. This leather sleeve here. To keep my hand from burning on the barrel of my musket. I kid you not. Like when I was at Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Talking like a Gettysburg vet, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. So, I could hear the sweat sizzling <laughs> on the barrel. I kid you not, I could have fried an egg off the barrel of, the, of this musket. This thing really, really got heated up. And to the point where the wood, I could actually feel the wood getting really, 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 really fucking hot. Um, these fuckers are no joke when it comes down to heat. So, there we go. Oh, jeez. And, uh, yeah. My interest in history is it's a giant survival story. Uh, just, just so you guys know. Um. It's not so much playing war. Of course, that's a piece of it. You know what I mean? It, it's fun. It's fun. All right, and 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 that that's 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 why like, you know, it's a fun way to go out and do history. Uh, and and I used to play war all the time when I was a kid. Anyway, so and uh, this just brings me back. You know, I can grab my sons. We can all go out and fucking yeah. You know what I mean? But anyways. I, I like history because it is a giant survival story and uh 
you learn a lot from history. You learn quite a bit from history. And if you look, look at history in the lens of, hmm, you start seeing similarities. And uh, some of them can be scary, but some of them can be, can open up your eye a little bit and you can learn from mistakes of others through history. So one, you don't repeat them. And two, you can prepare for, for the, the bullshit. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that's a good thing about history right there. So that's it. Wood, I'm waiting. <laughs> so enjoy the video. Okay, so now let's get in some of the clothing and equipment that the Civil War soldier would wear. Okay, so first off, we have brogans and socks, uh, wool socks. Look, wool is an ongoing theme um, at, in the Civil in the Civil War soldiers' uh, uh, gear list. So you're gonna hear wool a lot. Uh, these brogans. Are, were handmade um, they're made out of complete leather leather wood uh, some some of them had wooden pegs to hold it together and uh, as you see these are hobnails uh, these are for traction but it's also heel savers uh, to make the brogans last a lot longer while on the move and as you see they got the steel heel saver right here um, and when you're marching down the road, it makes you sound like you're tap dancing a little bit. <laughs> These are actually quite comfortable. Uh, if you cheat a little bit, uh, you can throw some modern insoles in there. They're actually pretty pretty comfortable. I would definitely, if you're thinking about getting a pair, I would definitely uh, think about getting a couple sizes big. Uh, these are gaiters. Um, they wore these in the first half, and then after that, they said, hey, you know what, we're going to stuff our... Uh, trousers and our socks but uh yeah this was this was out there in the beginning um and then after that a lot of soldiers just disregarded uh what these were for was just to keep the bugs out from underneath your leg rocks all that stuff you get a rock in those things you know it um these right here were the trousers uh, they're all wool uh, these were cnc southerners and these are the braces or suspenders now, but they call them braces back then. And uh, they all have pewter buttons. These were, yeah, CNC Sultry, CNC Sultry made these. It's pretty cool. Um, but before you put all that stuff, these these were called drawers. Um, you throw these on. There was pants and shirt. There's pretty much uh, that era's underwear, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't wear the pants. I go commando. That was probably a big no-no back in the day. But. Oh, jeez. Excuse me. And uh, this is this is a shirt. Um, just a homespun shirt. Uh, a lot of guys. To get issued the white shirt. Uh, a lot of guys would buy or bring their own shirts from home. And wear those. So. A little piece from home. Uh, this right here is a vest, a double-breasted vest. Um, they're popular, especially amongst officers and shit like that. This is double-breasted. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this is a frock coat. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, the frock coat is made out of wool, and uh, this is a nine-button. Um, I wear the frock coat because many of the colored troops back in the day, uh, they had, they just wore frock coats. Um, you'll also see on the field four button uh, fatigue blouses. So that that's really popular amongst reenactors. But I love wearing this thing right here. This thing's very comfortable. Um, very, very, very comfortable. But so it's a very long too. So we'll just move this aside here. 
Okay, so next we have uh, the the haversack. All right, so the haversack was pretty much a pack that you'd put on your body, it's like a sustainment pouch nowadays. Um, if you happen to understand military term a little bit better. So that's pretty much what this was. It was just a giant sustainment pouch. Um, it held your food, personal effects to that nature. Uh, as you see, I got, got the cup on there. Uh, usually I have a maquette on there, but it's dirty. Um, I usually have two cups. I put one cup inside and I carry my maquette on the outside. Uh, the reason why I carry two cups because look, I'm always boiling something, you know what I mean? But I always want to have something hot to drink. Coffee. Hot rum. <laughs> Sake. All right, no. no. All right, so, but what we're going to hear is like personal effects, brothel tokens, uh, uh, nudie pictures, uh, uh, salt pork, uh, coffee, hardtack. Uh, sugar, you you name it, just just all types of, you would throw all kinds of shit inside there. Um, these things did come, uh, the haversacks did come in many different sizes. I've actually seen them, and they're actually they're pretty big. Um, I seen them in pictures, and this this they they they're long. So, and actually, I'm thinking about making a long one of these. So, and this is just a sling bag. Over the shoulder sling bag. That's all it is. Nothing fancy in the back. And it's called, it's a gummed bag. So it's tarred or painted. Black's all this is, is just canvas with, it's just painted or tarred for waterproofing. And next, uh, a feeding system for your rifled musket. Um, your rifle musket needs a nice little feeding system so you can go to war successfully. Um, so this is a bo uh, cartridge box. Um, as you see, it's a it's over the shoulder sling. Then you're also gonna see two plates here. Uh, this is a chest plate. Uh, these were filled with lead, believe it or not. And uh, you would, if you ran, started running out of mini balls, you can melt these down. Uh, well, not the brass, but the lead shit inside. You melt them down, turn them into mini balls. All right, so this is your weather pouch. Uh, it keeps the weather out. And uh, that's how that plate is fastened on there. And this right here is your cartridge flap, the one that keeps cartridges in there. As you see, I have them loose. But inside there would be two tins. And a large uh, secondary pouch. Oops. Well, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And it would hold like this. Get a little fastener right there. Real quick release fastener. And on the back, that's what that looks like. On the back. Uh, so some guys, they would take these, take the shoulder strap off. I think in later, later time, they would take the strap off and actually just hook it onto their belt. So, less stuff rubbing on their neck. Okay. So I'll talk about hats real quick. Um, this right here is a forge hat, and this right here is a slouch hat. Uh, uh, they're quite popular. Uh, this is the forge hat is commonly what you would see um, amongst reenactors. There is kepis and uh, and hardy hats and shit like that. Uh, the forge hat right here is exactly that. It's a foraging hat. You can put all types of stuff that you tactically acquire and you could stuff it inside this hat. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was designed for. And, uh, or you can use it as a makeshift bowl. You go to get your rations and you can put it inside your hat and walk, walk off. Um, so this is the 118th, uh, company F, 118th New York company F, uh, the horn means infantry, the French horn. 
because Fran French French back in the day was all the rage. You know what I mean? And uh, let's move those paper towels. Uh, the slouch hat, slouch hat was pretty much a modern day cowboy hat. Well, it's pretty much a cowboy hat now. Um, these things are awesome. I love them. Keep you nice and cool. Um, next is a canteen. Uh, canteens, I mean, everybody knows what a canteen is, but now people use camel packs. And uh, so this is a court stopper right here. And it's over the shoulder. Just by cotton uh, it's a canvas, canvas strap. Um, some had leather straps, but there's many different types of canteens. It's wooden canteens. Uh, people use gourds. People, it, you name it. it. There's so many different styles of canteens. Uh, this right here, and, and before you say anything, but it's gray. I pretty much use this as a battlefield pickup like my i lost my canteen or some shit and i picked this up randomly on the battlefield that's what it's supposed to betray but some people don't pick up on it oh belt knife hell yeah um this is another setup another rig uh, this is my pistol rig uh this is 1860 and here's a different style cartridge box uh this is a this is a cavalry cartridge box for carbine. So, and I, I repurposed it again. It's the, the weather flap and then your main storage flap. I repurposed it on my musket, my musketry shit, musket cleaning shit, maintenance box. Uh, that's the bottom there. But yeah. And this right here is... Uh, is your waist belt that so would hold your bayonet your bayonet the highly underrated bayonet um leather scare a lot of guys lose that tip right there <laughs> you'd be surprised how many tips you find on the on the field and this right here is your percussion cap box um which is has the same process, uh, the same principle. Uh, you'll have your weather flap, keeps that weather out, and then you'll have your main. Um... <sighs> well, your secondary secure security flap. Uh, inside the protection cap box. Jeez, if I can get it. This fur there. A lot of people like it shaved. I don't mind a little bit of hair. <laughs> um, that fur right there is to keep the caps from, from falling out when you're running. Um, I learned my lesson when I was doing skirmishing and uh, I lost a lot of my caps. Bill wouldn't let me live that one down. He just kept bothering me. I oh, yeah, lost the caps. <laughs> you know, the... But yeah, there we go. So, and again, on the plate here is the U.S. with a lead filled. So, so there we go. That's that's a pile of equipment. Ah, uh, just some of the of the of the clothing and equipment that a Civil War soldier would carry. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I got right here. All right, it's just this, no blade. I got a file here that I was working on to make a knife. So I'm gonna turn this into a working knife, but not that shape though. Let the games begin.